I've got the same general format with these, although I'm going to make it a lot shorter than I usually do these. Uh, biscuits from Heaven Back with another video. And um, if you're watching the three hour movie, three hour and about 15 uh, movie, you have a lot of thoughts that come and go that you don't get to collect. So I'm not going to try to do a movie review. Uh, I don't think there's much to talk about, which. Well, in regards to a, a review, I don't think there's that much that would be different than if you did a review for Avatar 1. In fact, a good chunk of the formula for this movie centers around that of what made Avatar 1 successful. It's um, not necessarily cookie cutter, but... Um, so thoughts, questions. Questions that I had come up either before, during, or after watching that movie. Uh, I'm just going to list off a few just in succession. I'm not going to rank them or, or sequence them or anything like that. Step one, is it better than everything, everywhere, all at once? I'm not even going to submit my answers to these questions. Everything, ev everything, everywhere, all at once is of the 12 or 13 movies I watched in theaters this year. My favorite movie I watch, number two, would probably be Avatar 1 which I watched for the first time, and I believe in July or so. Just keep that in mind. Um, is Sigourney Weaver a goat? Yeah. Um, does it hurt the movie that at least a good chunk of the late first half, early second, not half, early first, third, middle, second, wait, we try it one more time. <laughs> Late first third, early second third. Does it hurt that resembles Avatar 1 a lot? I would even conclude that the last third is very similar to Avatar's last third, in fact. There is a lot of common things that must... Does, does that hurt? I don't think... I don't... Mm. Mm. <laughs> it kind of depends on what you, you went for. Um, is this better, visually speaking, than Avatar 1? Because you have to progress. And then a secondary question to that. Is this better than the top tier, that can be a lot of things, blockbuster of today? Because CGI, graphics, you have more options now than you did in 2009. Is the plot more interesting than Avatar 1? Which I think is by far... Uh, I don't think the plot is the least interesting... Or the, the, the worst part of Avatar 1. I would probably say the dialogue is the worst part of Avatar 1. The plot isn't amazing, though. But I digress. Uh, are, do the characters outperform in terms of acting... Or at least, in, forget acting. Are they more interesting characters now than there were 13 years ago? Um, there's another big one that I had. Uh, did, did James Cameron do a better job in producing this movie than he did in directing the last one? Um, is this, Oh yeah, here's a big one. Is this movie Disney-fied in any capacity? Keep in mind, it was greenlit 12 years ago in 2010... Obviously, it's not the same script that it was in 2010 because that would just be impossible. Uh, just, it was supposed to come out, I think, two to three years ago. I believe it was supposed to come out uh, a Christmas release for 2020. Obviously, something happened in 2020 that prevented that from happening. Um, I guess there's like there's little side questions here, but primarily, is this movie Disney fought? I guess the secondary thing would is this movie. This isn't related, but uh, kind of related. Is this movie. If it does fail, is it a failure because of the time elapsed between when it was greenlit and what we eventually got? Is it a failure because we got it in 2022 where CGI has caught up to what James Cameron and co. did on the first movie? Is it a failure because it's not a good movie, which many people contend that Avatar 1 in of itself, just as far as outside of the visuals, not a great movie. Um... If it fails, does it fail because Disney? So that's where you link it back to. Um, do I think it will fail? 
I, I think this should realistically be within a top 10 of the all-time selling movies. I don't know if that's a failure. Like, would 1.4 be a failure? I don't think so. I don't know. I, I looked at a few articles earlier today. I don't know what a flop is for Disney slash 20th Century Fox here. I do know there's trepidation, a lot of trepidation about this failing because three is already packaged and ready to go. And four and five are at least to me, apparently schemed up in Cameron's head. So they could theoretically, if this succeeds, go ahead and knock out the other three real quick as they have planned on their release schedule. However, there definitely seems to be a lot more trepidation with this trepidatious. That's not a lot of them, a lot more trepidation with this movie than you generally have with these blockbusters produced by Disney. Generally speaking, when those fail, they just fail, and that's it. We just kind of look at the formula. We say, okay, this needs to be tweaked, or we need to find a different director, blah, 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 go in a different direction. But it's usually not this level of, this whole shit could come crumbling apart if this fails. I guess you can contend that's because most of their other franchises are connected to some universe where you pretty much have to move forward to do this other movie with that other movie, so even if this fails... You kind of have to just push through it. You don't have to push through with more Avatar movies. Avatar could just be a sign of its times, and you can do two and three, which is clear with two that you'd have a three planned. I would also think with three being kind of green lady the way and four and five being dependent on two, that probably means that four and five will be distinctly different, uh, at least in terms of its direction, than two or three. So this is more than likely a trilogy. Um, and it will be different movies going forward. So this is a wide encompassing thing that Disney is thinking about here. This is not just does this current line of Avatar characters, are they interesting? It's like, does this formula of movie make sense in 2022? Which I think if you put the same fucking movie five different ways in phase four, um, you can't tell me that Doctor Strange, uh, something, something in love, whatever the fuck it was called, Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness was not the same fucking movie, damn near as Thor, uh, Thunder and Love. I thought it was the same goddamn movie, just about just two different forms of magic in that fucking movie. Technically, the god powers or whatever on magic, who, who gives a shit? Um, Phase Four is fucking terrible for Marvel in terms of movies and. No problem greenlighting the rest of these fucking franchises. You're going to have another Doctor Strange movie. You're probably have another Thor movie, I would imagine, at some point. But whatever. Um, I like Doctor Strange, too. I don't like Thor. But I digress. So that's about That's all of the questions I had on top of my head. I guess it's some kind of closing thoughts. I think this is a movie that you should feel good in deciding to watch. I don't think it's more of a hassle than the value of that time that you will spend watching this movie. It was light when I came out, or when I first came to watch this movie. It is now dark, as you can tell. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's one-eighth of a day to watch this movie, and if you consider how much time you're usually awake, about, what, 14 hours, maybe? A little bit more than just a third. Um, so I think it's worth the commitment um, I will not fucking pretend and lie to you like I was not bored at points because, like I said, there are parts of this movie that are a refrain from the first movie, almost verbatim, except different people are plugged into it. So I'm not dissuading you to not watch this movie or, or whatever. Um, I still think it's a great movie. I don't know if it's like... For me, the way I watch movies, I'm usually hypercritical, and then I'm hyper, oh my god, it's the best movie I've ever seen in my life. I'm on the streams. Uh, initially, I was coming to the movie with a little bit of criticism, like just or not criticism, but critical mind of thinking to just say, hey, this might not be better than the first one. And by the end of it, I was like, is this a movie that's amongst the best of this year that I've watched? So it, that, that at least tell you that by the end of the movie, I was... I had a good time with the movie. Like, I thought it was a good movie. I did almost not off for, like, a good 10 minutes there. I, I don't know at what point that was. I want to say it was kind of, um... I want to say it was around the time that, uh... 
some characters are being chased by other characters. Let me just say that. I can describe a thousand different things. But uh, kind of towards, I think, the back second or the early third act, uh, I kind of started nodding off a little bit. But, like, maybe, like, five minutes in total. I kind of parked back up. So, again, I had a good time watching this um, for the most part. It it was it was tough at some times. And it's not a movie that... If you have uh, some real fundamental problems with, like, the, the cheese of the dialogue in number one, um, some of the, oh my god, that's a trope, a movie trope uh, for, for number one. That's, that's going to come back. I'm saying that right now. There's going to be some trope shit. There's going to be some corny shit. Um, there's a, a way to address a human being that's popular in, I, I would say today's world and back then, 2009, but definitely in today's world, the way you kind of address somebody, uh, usually a male, and that shit gets said way too many fucking times in this movie. That's a fact. I'm not even mad about it, but just because you have different permutations of that word does not mean it makes it any less interesting or any less offensive when you repeat it 1,500 fucking times. I wasn't offended by it, but it was just something they did. Probably. The dialogue is much better, I feel like, or at least less tropish and less of the times, I feel like. What? Is it less of the time? I mean, I watched the 2009 movie in 2022. So I feel like that shit was dated dialogue. Maybe somebody in 13 years from now will feel like this is dated dialogue. Maybe. I don't know. But that's it for me. Uh, I don't want to put a number on here and kind of be stuck and beholden to like a certain thought process here. I don't know what I would rate this, honestly, even if I wanted to rate it. Because I don't feel like it's a 10 out of 10 movie. And I don't feel like it's a 7 out of 10 movie. It's somewhere between those two. Uh, but I do think it will succeed. Maybe not to fucking avatar one or titanic but i think cameron he has another one depending on what you consider another one